Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to the Two Bros Wrestling Show. And we're dropping a little early this week because if you actually are watching us on the day we drop, it's Super Bowl Sunday, which is why we decided to pre-record this week's broadcast and go a little early so that everyone can enjoy the big game tonight. But we want to get your wrestling content in before we get your football content on. And we certainly need to do a show the week before Elimination Chamber to talk about the last stop on the road to WrestleMania. And that is what our main event topic is tonight. And that is Elimination Chamber Preview. We're going to talk winners, uh, what we expect, how we think it's going to change things prior to WrestleMania. It's a really quick turnaround time from uh, the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, but we have a long lead time before WrestleMania. So we will go over the matches that have been announced as well as those we think are going to be announced. Um, but before we get into that, and before we even get into the news, obviously I am by myself again this week. Doug, once again, medically unfit to participate in tonight's event. Um, and so if I can just take a moment and I'd like to uh, address Zelina Vega, if I could, um, Zelina, we mentioned it last week, but when Doug was last on the show, he talked about the fact that the Canadian destroyer just messes with his brain. So please queen, I implore you stop using that move. The only thing weaker than that boy's brain is his fragile, frail body, and you're killing him. So, for the love of God, please, please help Doug to come back to the show by stop doing the Canadian Destroyer. We know you're a fan. We know you watch. So, Queen Zelina, you have plenty of other moves. Let's get Doug back on the show. What do you say? And with that, let's hit the opening bell. We got plenty of news to talk about this week, uh, and obviously, we need to start with well wishes from the Two Bros Wrestling Show to the Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler. If you did not hear, Lawler suffered a massive stroke this past week and is now recovering in a Fort Myers hospital, uh, Fort Myers, Florida hospital. It's reported that his speech is affected. However, the 73-year-old's Twitter account is saying that he is expected after rehab to make a full recovery, which is what we hope for here on the Two Bros Wrestling Show, of course. We love the King. Um, Jerry obviously is no stranger to heart issues. He suffered a stroke back in 2018. And then, of course, there was his infamous heart attack that he had on air while broadcasting Monday Night Raw back in 2012. We are on the road to WrestleMania, of course, so... WWE already, though, has their eyes on their second biggest event of the calendar year, and that is SummerSlam. They announced this past week the location for SummerSlam as well as the date. They are returning to uh, Detroit, and they will be there at Ford Field for the first time since they were at WrestleMania at Ford Field some 20 years ago. Uh, SummerSlam this year will take place August 5th. That is in Detroit. And speaking of WrestleMania, WrestleMania weekend brings out all of the wrestling companies to be in town, right? And that is what's happening again this year. If you're not any company that is not AEW, I should say, is probably going to be in Los Angeles and, uh, the, and or the Hollywood area around WrestleMania time. And this week we found out that not only is New Japan Pro Wrestling and Impact Wrestling two of those companies, but they are going to be co-producing an event together WrestleMania weekend. The uh, With the international wrestling audience in town, the New Japan and Impact are taking advantage by presenting Multiverse United, Only the Strong Survive. Bit of a mouthful for a pay-per-view, but that is what they're calling the show they're hosting on Thursday, March the 30th. They already announced a few matches for that, and that includes Impact World Champion Josh Alexander stepping into the ring against the legendary Kushida. And meanwhile, in the co-main event spot, you got Speedball Mike Bailey in a possible match of the year contest against Will Ospreay. Uh, love to see those two tangle. Some pretty cool inter-promotional uh, inter matchups possible when you bring companies like this together. 
Uh, the other only match that they have announced at the time of, of this show's recording is another one I would like to see, and that's New Japan's Jeff Cobb uh, taking on Impact's Moose. That will be a hard-hitting contest. But the March 30th event, if you're interested, is going to be available for purchase on Fight TV. In other news, my match of the week last week, if you watched our show, uh, was Wesley versus uh, Dijak from the NXT Vengeance Day premium live event. Well, it turns out that match was even more impressive than I reported last week when I called it my match of the week. And that's because Dijak finished that contest uh, with a broken finger. Uh, not sure exactly at what point in the match it occurred, but he posted some pics that were pretty gruesome uh, to his social media accounts. So hopefully that heals. Not expected to necessarily miss any time. I'm sure it was painful and, and made what those two accomplished in the ring even that much more impressive. Also, speaking of last week, uh, we reported last week about ROH TV tapings taking place in the month of February. Um, that report, I think, has got a lot more validity to it now that those uh, tapings will indeed be happening in Orlando. Further evidence is, of that emerged this week when Tony Khan uh, had contracted talent that he has pulled from a Beyond Wrestling event. Beyond Wrestling announced that uh, this past week that Willer Yuta, Tracy Williams, and Trisha Dora will no longer be appearing on their Perfection or Vanity show that they were hosting in Worcester, Massachusetts on Sunday, February 26th. The fact that these Tony Khan contracted wrestlers uh, were all pulled at, for a date on the 26th coincides with the uh, reported timeline for when ROH TV tapings are expected. So more evidence that that will be happening, which is uh, so bad for the fans there, I guess, who uh, bought tickets wanting to see uh, the, this talent in Worcester, but good for wrestling fans overall in that it looks like Ring of Honor is soon to be appearing again on television. Fans of independent wrestling uh, were pretty happy, I suppose, Friday night. If you tuned in to NXT Level Up, you would have seen the debut of Blake Chadwick. Well, that's his real name. I, uh, as with all things WWE, you get a new name. But uh, Blake was hired by WWE, and he made his debut alongside of Byron Saxton on commentary for Level Up and did a great job. Um, Chadwick is an, known for his work with promotions like Coastal Championship Wrestling, uh, West Coast Wrestling Connection, Combat Fights Unlimited, amongst many other independent promotions. And he seems honestly uh, like already one of the better announcers that they that WWE has announced. A solid announce stable has been a issue for WWE, I think, in recent years. And I'm hopeful that maybe if it works out that Blake could work his way up through the system and find himself on one of the major brands. I think Michael Cole's doing well, holding the spot down on SmackDown. Uh, to me, Monday Night Raw, your flagship sh show, still has commentary problems that it looked like they had fixed in when they had Jimmy Smith, at least in my opinion. And of course, they let Jimmy go. Um, we're going to end with a big congrats. So we're going to end our news segment with saying way to go Gunther for becoming the longest reigning intercontinental champion this century, which just sounds impressive when you can say that, even though we're at the first quarter of this century, um, obvious, obviously titles change a lot more frequently in the last 20, 30 years than they have historically changed in the history of professional wrestling. It's still quite an accomplishment. This past Thursday, Gunther passed Shelton Benjamin's 244 days uh, to now move into sixth place all time. Um, and I think that the, he has a decent shot of, of moving into that top five because uh the next on in his sights would be the Rocks 264 days, which um, is less than three weeks away at this point. And so I think it's pretty comfortable to say that Gunther is going to go into the fifth all time um, and most this century. Probably not going to break the all time record. The longest reigning IC champ of all time is, I'm sure, safe because Honky Tonk Man holds that at 454 days. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the opening bell. It's time to get to the main event where we are here to preview Elimination Chamber 2023. And so I'm going to give you my predictions for each of these matches. 
I would love it if you all would leave in the comments what you think, who you think is going to win, whether or not you like the matchup. And uh, we will definitely, if you drop us a comment, we will make sure that we give you a reply. But let's look at this card. And before we get into the matches that are announced, let's talk about the matches that we presume are going to happen. Um, this past week on Raw, you saw Lita come out and make a save of Becky Lynch against Damage Control. Now, nothing has been announced. There's not even been a hint that there is going to be a match yet other than Lita showing up and saving Becky Lynch. But when you have a legend like Lita come back for two minutes of airtime at the end of Monday Night Raw, and it would be just odd if that was the end of it when you don't see Lita all that often and she shows up this close to a pay-per-view probably means that we're looking at a pay-per-view match and damage control being a three-man team who would be the third person for Becky Lynch and Lita to add to have a six woman tag match. Well, we are going to be in Canada and who is Lita's bestie uh, than fellow hall of famer Trish Stratus, which is the rumors. So we could get the dream team of Becky Lynch, future Hall of Famer, and current Hall of Famers Lita and Trish versus Damage Control. I do see that that is a likely scenario and a match that is probably going to get added. Um, if that does happen, who wins that one? How could you not have Trish Stratus uh, win in Canada? Um, and Becky Lynch is one of your main heels I don't see Becky taking the pinfall. One of the other members of Damage Control is likely to do the honors and lay down for one of the legends. And I think we're going to have a continuation, obviously, of Bailey and, and Becky Lynch moving forward. Uh, but expect that match to get added. Another match that is pretty much a done deal to be added, or at least the way that they're booking it on TV, it looks like it's a done deal, but not quite yet official, is a bit of a surprise in that we thought we'd be having this match at WrestleMania, but it looks like they're going to be giving to us early. So this show is, our show is airing on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, which means if all goes according to plan, tomorrow night there is a planned and announced contract signing uh, against uh, for, for Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley to have this contract signing for a match at Elimination Chamber. It does seem a little bit like they're rushing this. Um, it might mean that they have other plans for Lesnar in particular, being a sort of a part-time special attraction talent. Maybe they have something that's come up that they want to clear the Bobby feud off the books so that they can free uh, Lesnar up with plenty of time to build to something else at WrestleMania. But I'm not sure that that is the direction they're going to go. So I'm going to say that something either happens with the contract signing where we don't get the match or more likely even than that is we get the match at Elimination Chamber, but it is not conclusive as far as who the winner is. Up to this point, they've traded victories, and it would seem like this could be the rubber and blow-off match, but unless there is a big uh, name that's coming in that they want to work Lesnar against that he's never worked against before, I just don't see how we avoid having Lesnar and Lashley at WrestleMania. Honestly, their prior matches – by despite looking good on paper uh, and being fresh matches, they've kind of underwhelmed as far as what you would expect these two to have. So hopefully if they do end up with a match at Elimination Chamber, they finally live up to some potential. But I don't think it's going to be a conclusive finish. Um, so expect that something happens that will require a stipulation and then it'll be a blow off winner take all match at at WrestleMania. Um, if they do have this contest and they do want to uh, go ahead and, and wrap up the feud and do something else for Lesnar at Mania, then Brock Lesnar wins this one. Really what you're looking at here is two men who both need this. Uh, honestly, both could use the win, but Brock Lesnar is one of those guys who comes in and wrestles maybe once or twice a year. So I think he needs it more just because at this point, his once or twice a year over the last few years has all been used primarily to job out to Roman Reigns. So I think that Bobby Lashley being on television every week, he has better chance to recover from a loss 
than Brock Lesnar does at this point. If Brock Lesnar's only seen a few times a year and it's been years since anyone's seen Brock Lesnar be Brock Lesnar and, and win. So I think that if they do uh, go to a conclusion on this one, it's Brock picking up the win. Let me know what you think on that. And is this a match you want to see? Again, the first couple of times it's underwhelmed, but I think we're at least getting it one more time, uh, if not t- twice more with a, fin- a finale at, at Mania. Now we're into the actual card that we do know is uh, going to happen. And let's start with what I think is probably the lesser of the contest as far as importance goes. And that's a fun little mixed tag where we have Edge and Beth Phoenix taking on Rhea Ripley and Finn Balor. Obviously, Balor and Ripley are part of Judgment Day, one of the hottest factions in WWE at the moment. Edge made his surprising return at uh, Royal Rumble a couple of weeks back. And when um, when he was eliminated and, and on his way back and was being beat down by Judgment Day, Beth Phoenix made her return and came in for the save. So that's the setup in the background of this contest. And it's kind of interesting if you think about it, if the prior match that we talked about actually happens, uh, the, the probable match where we think that uh, Lita and Trish Stratus is, are going to be on the card, you're talking about uh, three legendary acts from the 90s, uh, legendary female acts. It's going to be on a premium live event in 2023. Uh, it's kind of an odd thing when you look at it that way, but it is something that very possible to happen. Typically, as far as predicting winners and losers, don't know what you all think. Again, drop it in the comments, but nine times out of 10, the, the face combo goes over when you have these legends come back. And especially when you have a uh, mixed tag match legends come back, real life couple uh, of the husband and wife duo of Edge and, and Beth Phoenix. Under normal conditions, I would say that that was a slam dunk, that that is going to be the outcome. However, I don't think these are normal circumstances. I think that you're probably going to see Rhea Ripley and Finn Balor win just because Rhea needs to stay strong. She is WrestleMania bound. She is going to be part of one of the women main events, uh, the female main events, and will be challenging Charlotte Flair for the championship. So that means either Finn Balor takes the pin to edge, which which is possible, or the heels uh, somehow manage to hook and crook their way into a victory. And this continues uh, to, to WrestleMania for at least edge and Finn Balor, which I think is the most likely scenario uh, to happen here. So I'm going with the heels on this one. That takes us to what is going to uh, occupy a lot of the broadcast time. Elimination chamber matches, because we have to have multiple, multiple, multiple pinfalls, are all rather lengthy, and you have two of them on the card, the men's match and the women's match. Now, This is something I want you all, again, drop in the comments here and let us know what you think about this. I'd be asking Doug this if he were here. But um, what do you think about a men's elimination chamber match that does not have world title implications? The whole uh, scenario of this pay-per-view is it is elimination chamber. And typically, this has been used to help keep some intrigue going into WrestleMania as to who's going to be in those main events because it's always had implications for the world or universal championships. Um, Not this year. This year, Elimination Chamber on the men's side is for the United States Championship. Austin Theory having to defend that belt against uh, other male performers here. Um, Do you like that or no? Do you think that it cheapens the Elimination Chamber uh, concept to have it be for a secondary title? Uh, rather than either for the championship itself or a shot at the uh, major championship itself. I'm a little torn on that one. Uh, I understand why they're doing it, and it is that Sami Zayn problem that they that WWE had, and it's a good problem to have, but they were just not counting on Sami being such a hot act, so they're going to have to blow Sami, uh, the Sami Zayn-Roman Reigns match off on this pay-per-view, and that is where... Um, the, your main event is likely to be in the last match of the night. It's similar to what we saw at Royal Rumble, where in many ways the Rumble match, which typically is going to end the pay-per-view, played second fiddle to the Roman Reigns bloodline slash Sami Zayn KO saga. And I think we're going to see the same thing happen on this night, which is why we have a United States championship 
elimination chamber match, as opposed to that match being having any implications uh, for Roman Reigns whatsoever. So Austin Theory is going to have to defend this belt against Seth Rollins, Johnny Gargano, Bronson Reed, and Damian Priest, and the wild card, in my opinion, Montez Ford. Now, there's a lot of ways you can go with this. Obviously, the deck is usually stacked against a champion in these style matches where you can take a pinfall and not even be around at the end of the night when the champion is decided. Uh, is, is that what happens with Austin Theory here? Um, Montez Ford, again, to me, that's the wild card because it has always been my opinion that when with that man's athleticism, that he is a future single star. Is this the, the beginning of that push where they, um, they surprise, you know, here it is. Uh, he, here it is. His partner does not make a, the qualifier to get into this match. Montez does. Does this break up the street profits? If Montez goes on and, and comes out of this with the championship, that is a, a fresh spin that they could use, uh, coming out of this to reset the whole uh, U.S. title scene prior to WrestleMania. I like that booking, but I just don't think that's the way it's going to go. I think that, again, you have to look at all of these matches with WrestleMania in your lens, right? Like, where do we go to get to WrestleMania? And I think the ultimate goal at WrestleMania is continuing this one-on-one -on -one feud with Seth Rollins and Austin Theory. So to me, that's the way this match is going to go. Either you get Austin Theory somehow managing to hold on to his title and you get a one-on-one -on -one match against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania where Seth Rollins is likely to finally overtake him. Or you do the title switch now and have Seth Rollins uh, take the title in a way that maybe uh, has nothing to do with Austin Theory um, being around at the end of this match and therefore when he gets his rematch, it's one-on-one -on -one with, you know, the grievance of, you know, you didn't ever pin me to lose that, you know, title. So who knows, but I do think that it is going to be theory and Rollins at WrestleMania. The question in my mind is going to be who is the champion and who is the challenger. And that is what we'll end up finding out at elimination chamber. It's down to those two. Anybody else would be a surprise. That gives us to the women's elimination chamber match. Now this one has more traditional implications to it. The winner of this match is who goes on to take be who goes on to face Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. We have Oscar, Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Nikki Cross, Carmella, and Natalia. Um, so who do you think? Elimination Chamber matches are hard to predict just because there are so many moving parts, so many possible winners, so many possible storylines. But once again, let's look at WrestleMania. If the ultimate uh, conclusion of this match is how we spend the next few weeks of television building up a Bianca Belair match, who is a likely opponent for Bianca Belair? I'd love that Liv Morgan would win this. She has been a real success story over the last year. We've seen her star rise. We've seen the audience truly embrace her. However, the problem is she and Bianca are both face. So would you do face versus face at WrestleMania in one of your main matches at or near the main event of one of your two nights of WrestleMania? I don't know that they go that direction. Um, I'd like to see also Raquel Rodriguez versus Bianca Belair. I think that, is the way that I'm going to come down on this one. I think even though that too is face versus face, you have two powerhouses and you have a rising star in Raquel and you could really make her with a good performance in Elimination Chamber. I think she's on the verge of breaking out anyway. And, and uh, you see that on television right now. But I think that is probably the most intriguing matchup for WrestleMania. Again, though, you have that face versus face problem. It wouldn't surprise me that they go with Raquel Rodriguez, my pick to win this Elimination Chamber match. Uh, and then some point between now and Mania, you see one of these women start to bend a little towards the, the dark side. I don't know that we do a full turn, but we have seen Raquel before as a heel in her NXT days. 
Uh, obviously, she she plays she plays the baddie really well. She she's the big tough. She's the giant uh, monster kind of strength character. So I could see that. Or if you want to go the other route, uh, it's been a while since we've seen Bianca on on the dark side, and maybe she starts to bend the rules a little bit. Uh, she starts to feel threatened by Ra- uh, Raquel Rodriguez. I just think that that's probably the likely scenario uh, is that we get Raquel in this and she is my pick to win the Elimination Chamber. Um, if the question is, is how they build a face versus face feud or if they turn somebody. Um, let me know if you disagree. There are, you know, obviously some other good, uh, you know, possibilities in here. All these women are extremely talented. Uh, there are some, though, I just don't see as at WrestleMania worthy at this time. Uh, Natty. Lover, legend, but she's been gone a while. I don't know that, that at this point they see Natty as a main eventer. Uh, Carmella uh, is sort of the same way, not nearly the talent that Natalia is, but she is just back and and probably not over enough for that role. Um, so honestly, that leaves Asuka, who is intriguing. Um, Liv Morgan, who, again, I would like to see, but I just don't know that the the face versus face dynamics would work there. And then Nikki Cross, who, again, I'm not sure is quite ready just yet. But uh, Raquel Rodriguez is my pick. And let us know what you think. And speaking of letting us know what you think, let's talk the final match. And that is the main event, the match that if Doug were here, I'd be asking him, like, what do you think? about a Sami Zayn victory here. Cause I, I know that for the longest time, Doug has been predicting that Sami Zayn is going to come out of this storyline as your champion. That really in, in fairness to Doug, that prediction uh, has always been that this was all going to lead to WrestleMania and the big story in WrestleMania would be the Reign of Roman Reigns finally coming to an end when the ultimate of underdogs, Sami Zayn, comes out of uh, Roman's bloodline, out of his shadow, has had enough and 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 overtakes him for the title uh, in a true Cinderella story. That would have been a great story. However, there is no indication that that's where WWE is now going with this. There's been several obstacles uh, for long-term booking, and that is really because up to two or three months ago, there was probably hope in WWE holding out hope that The Rock would be appearing at WrestleMania and that you would be leading to a a bloodline uh, contest of who really is the head of the table, who is the head of this family, and doing it on the basically in the backyard of your Hollywood star of uh, the rock, a uh, family member versus family member. I don't know how long we can keep Roman as champion holding that belt until that big WrestleMania moment where the rock's finally able to make it. Roman is a part-timer really at this point himself. He doesn't do road shows anymore and he is, you know, advancing in age. Rock is obviously a once in a blue moon performer who again is not getting any younger himself. So I'm worried that the window on that dream match may be closing, but it once again, doesn't appear like it'll happen this time around. Obviously Hollywood would have been the ultimate location for it. And unless there's some last minute change of, uh, of rocks availability, it looks like we're going to be going Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, your Royal Rumble winner. If that is your mania main event, that does present now the problem of Sami Zayn, the hottest act in all of professional wrestling and the act that re- wrestling fans really want to see. Um, and that is no offense to Cody at all, who had a very compelling storyline himself derailed by injury, which really gave the opportunity for Sami Zayn to rise. Again, good problem to have. WWE has three possible WrestleMania main events, one of which apparently can't happen because of the Rock's Hollywood schedule. That would probably take you to the secondary event that most fans would would vote for, uh, given the choice, and that's Sammy versus Roman. And then, sadly, coming in third, and I say sadly just for Cody, just because he probably deserves better than that, uh, considering how good and consistently good he's been since he's returned to WWE. But that's probably the third of those three options, which means – because Cody is your Rumble winner and the choice they made there uh, was to have Cody win and go on to face uh, the world champion at WrestleMania. Do you really see a, a Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn main event at WrestleMania? 
I don't know how they sell that. I think that the big money on the table at WrestleMania is Roman Reigns finally coming to an end of his title reign. And Cody's already in that match. So you got to do the math here. And that means that Sami Zayn is taking the loss. I would love to think of it. I mean, who would have even thought a year ago that you'd see Sami Zayn taking on Roman Reigns at any point, much less actually think of it as a conceivable option for Sami to walk away with that title. But it is a conceivable, I think, in most fans' minds that at this point, if they want to see Roman toppled, there's no one they would rather see do it than Sami Zayn. I just don't see them being able to sell Sammy versus Cody at WrestleMania. Um, there is a possibility you turn this thing at WrestleMania into a three-way and not have a definitive finish here, but I just don't think that most fans would. You don't go into a pay-per-view and expect that uh, that you're not going to get definitive winners. I think Roman Reigns destroys Sami Zayn here. I think Sami puts up a, a good fight, a spirited fight. But in the end, um, I think that I think that this is the end of Sammy's storyline with Roman. Um, now, it's maybe not his ending storyline with the bloodline. I think that whatever is he, obviously Sammy is too hot a character to not have on WrestleMania. So what would his WrestleMania match be if this is the blow off of the feud with Roman? It still needs to be with the Usos. I would think it has to still be bloodline related. Um, that's been a rumor that it'd be the Usos versus KO and Sammy. Uh, I know that's maybe not as compelling uh, as the Sammy Roman, but um, as much as I'd love to see Sammy pin the, the tribal chief's shoulders to the mat, if this match was happening at WrestleMania, I would be predicting Sammy Zayn as your ultimate underdog Cinderella world champion. I would be in agreement with Doug that, Hey Doug, you've been a right all along. It's Sammy's time. This whole storyline is going to end in him getting that Kofi Kingston, like unbelievable. We never thought it would happen. This guy, everyone loves and finally gets what he deserves. Um, that's what I would be predicting if this match was being held for mania, but because Cody Rhodes return and because of Cody winning the Royal rumble, uh, I think that Sammy Sammy bows out. I know this is in Canada and it's his, uh, you know, in front of his hometown crowd of Montreal, but don't think that it's going to be enough uh, to overcome Roman Reigns, especially when you need Roman to finally lose this title at your biggest event of the year. And that is my predictions for Elimination Chamber 2023. What do you all think? Are you excited about Elimination Chamber? Do you think it's coming along a little too quick after Royal Rumble? Uh, drop it in the comments, and again, we will make sure that we answer. And with that, fans, we're going to hit the big finish. That is our one, two, three, and I am starting out my one, two, three this week with the botch of the week. Toxic Attraction. The splitting up of Toxic Attraction is my miss and my botch for this week. Toxic Attraction has been one of the most entertaining things on NXT for this past year, and I understand that it's lost a bit of momentum when Mandy Rhodes got unceremoniously let go by WWE with a little bit of a scandal uh, back at the end of last year. Um, that said, even though Toxic Attraction lost their mouthpiece, it's always been uh, JC and, and uh, Gigi that tagged together. I mean, he was always the singles wrestler. So the tag team of toxic attraction was still strong in my mind. And so when I'm saying botch, it has nothing to do with the way that they did the breakup, which I thought was well acted by both women and uh, very believable. It's just that prior to Mandy Rose getting uh, released, there was rumor that toxic attraction was getting ready to move up to the main roster. So when I say that I think that the splitting up of toxic attraction is a botch, it's because these ladies never had an opportunity to take this act to the main roster. And I think that even though they both have possibilities as a single star, there was a lot of juice in this tag team. They made an excellent tag team, especially when WWE doesn't have a lot of true female tag teams. This was one of those 
true female tag teams and not just singles acts that seemed like they were just put together just to, to hold a title. So with the main roster problem on the women's division um, being what it is and the tag team ranks, I don't understand why Toxic Attraction isn't getting a call up as a team as opposed to breaking up on NXT. I think this is a big miss. It is my botch of the week. My performance of the week Related back to uh, of what we were talking about earlier with with Cody Rhodes, um, Cody has a a large mountain to climb. Not only is he coming back from injury, not only is he uh, facing a world champion at WrestleMania who is historic in terms of his brain at the as particularly in the modern era of professional wrestling. Uh, Cody's problem is also the the yeah, the mountain in front of him. One of these obstacles is the fans, the fan base wanting Sami Zayn so much that it could actually be an impediment to his journey to the world title. And WWE realizes that they have this good problem to have as well, which is why reportedly they sent Paul Heyman to Raw this past week to have the program that he did in the ring with Cody Rhodes. While they definitely know they have a hot feud with Sami Zayn, they WWE reportedly does not want fans to lose sight of Cody Rhodes being the ultimate destination at WrestleMania. They don't want Cody getting lost in all this Sammy love. And I've mentioned this on the show before. Last week, I named Cody my performer of the week. This week, I'm giving it to him and Paul for the job they did uh, on Raw this past Monday, showing um, a a brilliant, uh, the brilliant minds of each of these men, the pr- brilliant improvisation skills. Um, was it a bit melodramatic at times? Sure, it's wrestling, right? Uh, they need to probably pull back a little bit on on the fake tears, or otherwise it's going to be a meme uh, that uh, Cody cries every time he comes out to the to the ring. However, the man is so believable and heartfelt in the things that he says um, that when he is speaking and getting emotional, you do believe it because it does appear to have a kernel of truth to everything he says and for him to talk about the Rhodes family um, being helped back in the day by Paul Heyman um, when, when they maybe come up a little short on money and Dusty needed a handout, uh, but was too proud to ask for one. Uh, Paul instead gave him an opportunity, an opportunity that Dusty then spun into a second act to his career that followed all the way through until uh, his death. But um, that was believable because it, it apparently is, is real. Um, but then, of course, it is Paul Heyman, who is a master at, at mind play, a master heel. And so he took these emotions and quickly turned it into a, the last thing your father ever said to me um, type of scenario where he cuts Cody, who quickly uh, retorts that, why does everyone want to make everything personal? Well, you've just made it personal because I just wanted a wrestling match for a title. And now you're, you're going to get that. You're going to get, you've brought the fire out of me by invoking my father. And now we're, we're making it personal. And of course, the reason we make it personal is that personal uh, feuds over titles sell tickets and they want to heat this up in a way that it either matches or makes people uh, satisfied with the conclusion of the Sami Zayn storyline and then excited about the Cody Rhodes storyline. How do you keep these two things going on? This is that awkward in between period where we are still looking at WrestleMania big picture, but we got elimination chamber short term and you have something that the fans have really, really been invested in playing up against something that uh, fans need to be reminded of that they were invested in uh, earlier in 2022. And that's not easy to do all at the same time, serving all these different masters. Yet for the last two weeks on Raw, you've seen Cody Rhodes come out and get great reactions, exactly the kind of reactions that WWE writers were hoping for. So at least by script, they're doing the best job they can at this period in time in building to a WrestleMania uh, event while still trying to keep some intrigue around Sami Zayn and Roman at Elimination Chamber. For that reason, Cody Rhodes with an assist to Paul Heyman are my performers of the week. And with that, we're going to end with my match of the week. As always, when there's so much wrestling on TV, a lot of good things to choose from, but 
you know, I for a while I was going to go with Bailey versus Becky Lynch and that that steel cage match on Raw, which was excellent. Um, but then Dynamite comes along, and I'm giving my match of the week uh, to to Takeshka versus Brian Danielson. Takeshka has really shown himself as a rising star. I think AEW has their first um, sort of homegrown international star in the making here. Somebody who was taking losses on dark uh, not that long ago in competitive contests, but still more often than, than not taking the pin. Uh, obviously he took the loss here as well, but it was against a, a multi-time world champion um, and wrestling legend in Brian Danielson. So uh, to watch someone like um, to watch a young up and comer take on a Brian Danielson and hold his own in in the wrestling end of, of the business says a lot about this young man's potential. And then of course there's Brian himself. What can you say? I, if I wished I had the actual number here in front of me, I take, uh, I would love to take count of how many match of the week honors I have given to Brian Danielson over the last couple of years of the two bros wrestling show. It seems like anytime you give him more than a five, 10 minute match, on television or pay-per-view, you put him against a credible opponent of any sort and not someone he's just mowing through. Brian Danielson is going to probably steal that show and very likely steal the week as far as having the match of the week. Even at his uh, age, uh, not the spring chicken anymore, still holding up and delivering in the ring where it counts. Um, I think it's going to be a great contest when he uh, takes MJF on in that one hour contest at the next AEW pay-per-view. Uh, but that's in the future. Actually, as you can see in our scroll, uh, just a few weeks into our future, uh, we'll be having that preview for AEW's revolution. But uh, next week, we at, are back uh, live on Facebook at 8 p.m. Sunday night. And Doug hopefully will be back. That is if Zelina Vega will leave his weak brain alone. Um, hopefully Doug is re returning next week. Get well soon, Doug. Um, join us next Sunday night, fans. And hopefully Doug will be here as we will be giving our review of Elimination Chamber. Like all of you, we'll be watching on Saturday night. We'll be taking notes. And we'll see how many of my predictions tonight come true. How many of yours? Let's get back together next week and let's talk about it as we are on the road to WrestleMania. One more stop to go. And then we have a whole month of March completely full of WrestleMania themed programming for all of you out there. And so whether you're watching us on YouTube, whether you're watching us on Facebook, give us a like, give us a follow and Enjoy the night's big game, whether you're a Chiefs fan or an Eagles fan. Uh, enjoy your football, and then let's get back here and talk wrestling. Till next week, thanks for tuning in, everybody.